When you feel all alone in this world And there's nobody to count your tears Just remember no matter where you are Allah knows Allah knows Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Now referring back to the first question about uh, Should we eat even the food is halal Even is halal but it's not clean Example It's not healthy food According to the Quran If you go back to the saying of Allah Rabbul Alameen Allah remind us ya ayuhanna kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiba. Now here Allah do not just emphasize halal food but Allah in the same time is reminding the believer look for good food halalan tayyiba. Now anything that you are been exposed been informed that is not healthy is not clean You should stay away. But we are not here to say it's haram. Halal is halal. But when it's not clean, it's not healthy, then the Prophet Wasallam always reminds us, Da'ma yaribuk ila mala yaribuk. Stay away from anything that is doubtful to something that is not doubtful. Something that is better. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, We do have different opinion among scholars today whether the food prepared by the people of the books the nasara the yahud is halal for us to consume like the fast food example now if you really go back to the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam number one, the quran is reminding us that all the early prophets was sent to a particular race and nation not for everybody exact example Allah say what is qala musa li qaumihi li qaum to his people what is qala isa li bani israil and jesus was sent to the lordship of israel not to other than the israelites Prophet Muhammad was sent rahmatan lil alamin wa ma arsalnaka ir rahmatan lil alamin and our prophet also have remind us that early prophet was sent to the particular people group but i was sent li nasi jami'an for everybody now coming back to the question ahli kitab can we muslim eat food prepared by the nasara if the nasara are from bani israel you must go back to the roots you cannot generalize everything because in the in the yomul qiyamah if any one of you chinese indian or indonesian filipinos we are not bani israel Now if you were meet up with Jesus and say Jesus save me I am your follower Jesus will say nafsi nafsi I'm not sent to you I am just sent I was not sent except to the lost sheep of Israel Never in the history of Jesus that he was sent to anyone except or any race except the Bani Israel In the time of Jesus when the non Israel was moving around they do have some non Bani Israel you know, with them then Jesus did say to his disciple we are not sent except to the lost sheep of Israel so if we are not a Bani Israel you cannot claim that you are the people of the book Only when you are a Bani Israel then you have the right to claim that we are the people of the books. That's how we go according to the 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 most uh, I would say uh, the most authentic discussion about Ahlul Kitab. We know the Quran said that the slaughtering of the Ahlul Kitab is halal for you. 
But who do Allah refer to? To a Chinese Ahli Kitab? An Indian Ahli Kitab? No. To Bani Israel. Zakallah. Zakallah khair, Sheikh. There's a question that a lot of people ask in Hong Kong. Though, inshallah, that will put some light on that. Sheikh, the second question I have is, um, we know too well we should consume which is halal. But what about the earning? The earning. If someone who is known to be earning from haram places gives you a form of donation, gives you a form of donation, can this be used for personal use or even da'wah, such as Quran printing? As a Muslim, we must believe in what Allah and the Prophet ﷺ remind us. Number one, when the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the same question that we are asking now, how about I'm not eating haram food, I'm not drinking haram drinks, I'm not dressing haram clothes, garments. One day, a traveler among the Bedouin, while he was traveling, he need Allah's help. So he raised up his hand and said, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, oh Allah, oh Allah, answer my prayer. I'm asking you this, this, this. Then the Prophet came to him and he asked the Prophet, why Allah is not responding to my prayer? When the Prophet have said that the dua of a traveler is powerful, will not be rejected by Allah. When the Prophet looked at this guy, Allah gave him the knowledge that the Prophet knew that he had a problem. He said, how can Allah accept the prayer of a person when he raised up his hand up to the sky, facing the sky, say, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, give me this, give me that. When his food is halal, eh, is haram, his drinking is haram, and his dress is haram. This make the the, the Muslim surprise him. I'm eating halal food. I'm drinking all the halal drink. I'm dressing jubba halal dress. Not silk. Yeah, that is haram for the male. Then the Prophet said, What? Islam is telling us is, even the food is halal, but if this money, the income that you have earned is from haram sources, then the food become haram. You example, you take riba money. Riba money. You buy Kentucky fried chicken that have halal logo. I don't know whether here you have halal logo. In our country, alhamdulillah, all the fast food halalan. Payiban, we don't know. Halal, okay. So, now what uh, the prophet is trying to say that you are using riba money to buy Kentucky. Of course, the prophet now said Kentucky. You don't have Kentucky at that time. But the, prof, the, the, the idea of this saying is that riba money buying Kentucky fried chicken that is halal. It becomes Kentucky riba chicken. Because the money is from riba. Riswa. You, know, you get riswa from bribery. It's haram. So you buy McDonald's. McDonald's ritual. That's how it goes. So anything that you buy is halal, but the source, the income is haram, it becomes haram. So stay away from any haram income to safeguard our iman, to make sure that our dua will be answered by Allah, inshallah. Just a following question to that. If somebody gives us money as a form of donation and we know that they are involved in haram activities in terms of earning, whether they're selling alcohol or something like that, so can we accept that donation in good causes? This is a very tricky question, actually. Sorry. Somebody wants to help us for a good cause. Example, he came to Brother Wa'il, saying, and this is from lottery. I got a another from lottery income. I got a good draw. Uh, I won't give it to you. Sadaqah. Of course, in Islam, there is no sadaqah from haram income. You cannot have the sadaqah intention 
for haram thing. Haram is haram. There's no more no reward for you because it's not halal. But if they are here to inform you this is haram money, then we as Muslims should also say thank you. Now it's very important. We do not just want money. We want halal because we want Allah to bless whatever we do. We are worried that if you're open for that, this is what happened to the other people. They don't care. As long as money, every money to them, halal. Even haram, I make halal. <laughs> no. To us, halal, bayin, or haram, bayin. Halal is clear. Haram is clear. When a person inform you this is from a har- haram income, we say, thank you. But we don't have to ask them. If they come to you, they, uh, this, I'll give you some charity. Sadaqah. Donation. Don't go and they, uh, where, do, where do this money come from? Don't ask them. You don't ask them, Alhamdulillah, you can use it. But when they, make, they confirm this is from haram, you say thank you. Because we do not want to get into that area. We do not want to be corrupted. Allah said, The successful one are those who keep themselves pure. And those who allow themselves to be corrupted, they all will end as a failure. So may Allah protect all of us, inshallah. Ameen, ameen. Just take halal money, inshallah. inshallah. <laughs> Last one for you, Sheikh. Um, is wasting food a sign of showing ungratefulness? Of course. I mean, waste, wasting food or anything is a sign of the work of Satan. Inna al-mubazzirina kanu ikhwani shayateen wa kana shaytani rabbi kafura. Anybody who wastes food or any kind of things is a sign of kufur because they are not thankful and grateful to Allah anymore. And this is the work of Satan. The Satan loves us yeah, yeah, to waste things. But for a believer, they were reminded by Allah not to waste. So we hope that even like example, if you're going for a buffet, please, brothers and sisters, I've seen a lot of good brothers and good sisters wearing niqab and all these things, jubba, the man, mashallah. But when they go for a buffet, they forget all the adab of eating. Buffet means if they open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. for breakfast, you can make tawaf Ten times, no problem. Ten round, no problem. From seven to ten, it's up to you. You can eat one round, you can go to the washroom again, discharge and come back again, it's up to you. But you are not supposed to waste. Yeah, it's a disgrace when I, I feel so ashamed when I saw some of the good Muslim brothers and sisters beside me and they put the first round, they put so many things on the plate like they are worried that this food is going to disappear. Inshallah, have faith. You know, you must have yaqeen. Buffet means the food is there from 7 to 10. You don't worry. Don't worry about the food. But some people are, the adapt of eating is no more there. Just try, sometimes you have new dishes, you're not sure whether you like that food or not. Just take a small piece, first round, and taste it first. If you like, go second round, third round, fourth round. If you want the tawaf, seven round. Yeah. So it's up to you, brother and sister, but please don't waste. Because that is a sign of kufur. Kufur ni'mah. So may Allah protect us. Yeah? Please yeah, have the right adab. Even you can eat as much as you can, but don't waste. One more. You just said you can eat as much as you can. There's a question I want to ask. Um, some people might get offended by this, but I need to ask, which is related to me as well. Is being fat... <coughs> Sorry, brother. Uh, is being fat <laughs> obese a sin? 
Some people, wait, they don't want to waste food. So they say, I'll eat yours as well, I'll eat yours as well. They don't want to waste food. They have a ni nice intention, you know. But <laughs> the after effect is, yeah. yeah. I think they have good intention. Hopefully. <laughs> they have good intention. They don't want to waste anything. Uh, so they make their stomach as a, as a storage, as a garbage, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I would like to remind all the good brothers and sisters, yeah, sometimes it's just that Allah gives us a very special kind of body, you know, you know that uh, you can really download a lot of things, you know. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, it's not easy, you know. You know? And uh, uh, the only... P we love, the man loved yeah, to have muscle. We like, you know, uh, our bicep to grow, tricep to grow. But the only part that we don't want it to grow, it grow very fast, is our stomach. And the Prophet did remind us that stomach is a source of all diseases. So be careful of your intake. I'm, I'm not saying you can't eat. We know that there is a saying that leave space to your body. One third water, one third air, and one third food. But that one third also is different. My one third and his one third, it cannot be the same. <laughs> it cannot be the same. No. The one third of what ill will be a different case. No. Some people, even they are very thin, they can eat more than people who are fat. Very unique. Our body reacts very differently. You know? So as long as you can still eat, you eat. The minute you feel that is enough to take a break, you take a break. That you only can judge your body, not other people. I have a friend who is you know, very thin. Each time when he chapati, you know chapati? Plata, plata, roti chanai. One person then can eat ten roti chanai. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. As long as he can eat, no problem. He enjoy eating, alhamdulillah. But don't waste. So there's nothing wrong uh, to be fat but healthy. You know? Fat but healthy. Yeah? So it's okay. Nothing wrong, inshallah. Fat but healthy. No. Okay, I'll say that to my wife then. Jazakallah khair. Okay, Sheikh, I'll, I'll think we'll stop here, inshallah. And I'll let you, you can, would you like to stand? or stand. Okay, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوز بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدلنا ومن يتلل فلا حادينا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أوصيكم وإياي أولا بتقوى الله فقد فاز المتقون Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praise due to Allah Almighty, the Creator, the Sustainer, the Provider, the All Knowing, All Hearing, All Seeing, All Powerful. May the blessing and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of us. And may Allah forgive all our sins, whether it's minor or major. And may Allah forgive the sin of our parents who have passed away as a Muslim, and may Allah forgive the sin for those who are present today and those who are absent among us. Amin. Ya Rabbul Alamin. Brothers and sisters, firstly, uh, I would like to thank the organizing committee again and all the volunteers who have been working very hard to make this conference a very successful one. And may Allah reward all of them for their times, for their qurban, all the energy and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our deeds. Amen. Now coming back to the topic gratefulness. Be thankful. Allah in the Quran remind us La in shakartum la azidanakum. La in shakartum la azidanakum. If you are thankful to Allah, you are grateful to Allah, 
Allah is going to add more of his blessing upon what he has given us. This is the power of being grateful and be thankful to Allah Rabbul Alameen. In return, in other, uh, the opposite side, Allah said, وَلَا إِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ أَزَّابِ لَشَدِيدٍ if you are not grateful and thankful to Allah, then we have to wait for the punishment of Allah Rabbul Alamin. Allah is the one who gives and He has all the right to take it back. Give you one example, brothers and sisters. We should be very grateful and be thankful because one of the greatest nikmah that Allah has given us is the guidance that we have as a Muslim. Every Muslim always asks Allah for one common thing every day without fail. When we perform our namaz, our prayer, we cannot complete the prayer without suratul fatiha. La salah lima la fatiha la. There is no prayer for any one of us who perform the namaz without reciting Al-Fatiha. And the most powerful ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha is what is the most powerful ayah, brothers? There is a beginning of Surah Al-Fatiha. All praise due to Allah. Alhamdulillah. Who is Allah? Who is Allah? Rabb al alamin Allah is not just Rabb to Muslimin. Allah is not just Rabb to Arab or Pakistani. No, Allah is telling us that He, the Creator of the world, and He is the Rabb of Alamin. So the minute if a Muslim feels that Allah is our God, our God only, not the God for the Chinese, for the Hindus, for the other race, we have misrepresent Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbul Alamin. Then in the surah, there's one ayat that is very, very important. And that is Dinas Siratul Mustaqim. Every single day we ask Allah for guidance. Why, brother and sister? Are we not guided? Are we guided? How are we guided? By Allah. Guidance belongs to Allah. Yahdi Mayasha. Look at the first ni'mah. Allah says, Is kuntum a'da'an fa'allafa bayna qulubikum fa'asbahtum bi ni'matihi ikhwana. In Surah Al-Ali Imran, Allah says, Once upon a time, all of you are like enemies, stranger to one another. We don't know each other. Until today, we still have that problem. The Pakistani cannot get along with the Indians. The Chinese cannot get along and along with the non-Chinese. The Arab cannot get along with the African. Just example. Not only by race, even by tribe, we cannot get along. And we fight against each other. We humiliate each other. Why? Because we are not guided. The white think they are superior than the black. Then Islam came and unite all of us. Is kuntum a'da'an fa'allafa bayna kulubikum fa'asbahtum bi ni'matihi ikhwana. With the blessing of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, 
we all become one big family. Are we a family, brothers and sisters? Alhamdulillah. Even a lot of us are not originate here. We are not Chinese. Yeah? But mashallah, a lot of Pakistani, Indian, Bangladeshi, now they speak Cantonese. Allahu Akbar. If you go to my country and you are a non-Chinese, you speak Cantonese, they will love you double. You can have special discount. <laughs> they say, you are one of us. Of course, they will respect and love you. Wow, you speak Cantonese. Yes. That is a blessing anyhow. Now Allah is telling us it's a great nikmah. Because of Islam, we become family, not only here, but we'll become family until the hereafter. We will recognize each other, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, this brotherhood and familyhood in Islam is a great nikmah. So it is our duty to show our gratefulness, our shukur to these nikmas by protecting this relationship. Don't destroy it. When you are a big family, take good care of the family. Don't fight against each other or humiliate each other because of your country anymore. No more. When you are in the masjid, you are here. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Khalas. Brothers, sisters, we are big family. This is one of the ni'mah. That unite all these nations and tribes together. And because of this, we bring peace and harmony wherever we go. We can live together. We can eat together. We can make namaz and salat together. Alhamdulillah. You don't get it in the other group you know, of the other race or other religion, but you have it in Islam. An Arab can pray behind an Indian Imam. An Arab can pray behind the Chinese Imam. No problem. Because Islam belongs to all of us. And every one of us is like brothers and sisters. We are no more a stranger. And Allah has said in the Quran, Ya ayuhan nas inna khalaqnakum min zakarin wa unza wa ja'alnakum shu'uma wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. Inna akramakum indallahi atqaqum inna Allah alimun khabir. Allah said, O people, He is not talking to Muslim only. He said, O oh people, O oh mankind, indeed we created all of you from one male and one female, from Adam and Eve, and make you into nation and tribes, so that you get to know each other, not to fight against each other, not to belittle each other, but to know each other, compliment each other, help each other, share with each other. Then Allah said, Inna akramakum innallahi the best among you is not because of your name, your race, your color, no. The best among you is what? At-taqwa. Allahu Akbar. Now Allah put everybody equal in the sight of Allah. To the extent that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before he, did, before he passed away, when he was giving his khutbatul wida, he did remind his great ummah. We are not just any ummah, brother and sister. We are Cairo ummah, the best nation. The best ummah. Now Allah, the Prophet ﷺ did say in khutbatul wida, Ayyuhun nas. Now listen carefully, brother and sister, to the saying of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi He was addressing 100% Muslim in Arafah. 
in Arafah, people who are not yet Muslim will not be there. It's a sacred area. When the people are performing Hajj, if you are not in Arafah on the 9th of Zulhijjah, there's no wuku for you, there's no Hajj for your class. And still the prophet used the term Ayyuhal Nas, O people. He don't say Ayyuhal Arab, Ayyuhal Muslimun, Ayyuhal Hujjaj. He used the term Ayyuhal Nas, O people. Inna Rabbakum Wahidun. Remember your Lord, the Creator, your God is only one. One God. We all believe Allah is the creator of all things. Rabbul Alamin. We don't believe that there is a Chinese God made Chinese people. An Indian God made the Hindus. Malay God made the Malays. No, no, no. It's their belief, not our belief. Our belief, one God, Allah created every one of us. Alhamdulillah. Wa inna abakum wahid. And the Prophet continued by saying, Remember that our father, we came from one man. Unless you have somebody say, No, my great great father is an ape. Then it's too bad. You know? Then we have nothing to commend. If you want to downgrade yourself from human to ape, what can we do? So when people say, you monkey, you cannot blame them. But you don't like people to call you monkeys. No? But we are children of Adam. This is what the prophet said. Inna abakum wahid. Kullukum in Adam. All of you came from Adam. From Adam. Wa Adam min turaf. And Adam is from the earth. Then the Prophet continued by saying, لَيْسَ الْعَرَابِيُنَ فَطْرٌ عَلَى الْأَعْجَمِينَ وَلَا الْأَحْمَلَ عَلَى الْأَسْوَةِ إِلَّا بِالْتَقْوَى It's a great ni'mah. Now the Prophet is an Arab. Majority of the Muslim at that time are Arabs. Alhamdulillah. But the Prophet still emphasized to the Arab. The Arab is not superior than a non-Arab. Neither the white is superior to the black. The best among you in the sight of Allah is what? A taqwa. Taqwa has nothing to do with your color, brothers and sisters. Even you are black outside, but inside, inshallah, you can still be white. And the Prophet, when you talk a taqwa, فَأَشَارَ فَأَشَارَ إِلَى صَدْرِهِ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتِ He make ishara to this part of the body, the heart. Taqwa is in here. Not how you look, how you dress now. It's a great enigma. The peace that you enjoy here in Hong Kong. We live in peace. Do we live in peace, brother and sister? Do you feel secure and protected living in Hong Kong? Alhamdulillah. It's a ni'mah. Be grateful, be thankful to Allah. And Allah said in the Quran, وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ إِسْلَاحِهَا وَدْعُوهُ قَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا إِنَّ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ مِنَ مُخْسِنِينَ Don't ever cause destruction after peace has been established. One day is peace. is a nekma. It's our duty to make sure that we work together as one family to make sure peace is there for everybody. If you don't take care of this peace today, you are not grateful to the peace that Allah has given you. You start to create problem, unrest, then Allah will take this peace away and he will replace with what? Not other people only. Then there will be war. 
Any country when there is war, who is winning? Who is winning? Shaitan wins. Both parties will lose. And Allah love those who are kind, the good doer, the righteous people, are the people who are thankful to Allah and they work very hard to maintain peace. Now we are talking about be grateful to Islam. Because Islam has saved us from a lot of problems. Islam has guided us to solve a lot of our personal problems. You remember last night, Mufti Ming did remind us about how blessed this Ummah is. When Allah created us, number one, He said to us, وَلَقَدْ قَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَدَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ قَلَقْنَا تَبْدِيلًا Indeed, Allah has honored the children of Adam. And He has created us in the best form. He has provided for us all the good things, the halal and good food. And also, He has prepared for us transportation on land and on sea. Among all the creation of Allah, human being is number one. We are the best. لَقَدْ قَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ we was created by Allah in the best form. And Allah gave us the best food. But today you have human, but they behave like animals. They don't care halal and haram. Animals also have their own rules and their own fitrah. They know any food that do not bring benefit to them, they stay away. We as human today, we have destroyed ourselves by not being thankful to Allah and not be careful with what we eat. Allah made us the best. He prepared the best food for all of us. He gives us the best guidance that is the Quran. Look at this ayah that Allah said. Ya yuhallazina amanu ati Allah wa ati ur-rasul wa ulil amri minkum. Fa intana zaktum fi shay'in farudtuhu ilallahi wa rasul. In kuntum tu'minuna billah wa yawmal akhir. To the end of the ayah in Surah An-Nisa. O you who believe in Allah. Obey Allah and obey the teaching of His Messenger and the leader among you. Who are the leader among us, brothers and sisters? Are we leaders, sisters? Are we leaders, sisters? No? Good. Brother, are we leaders? No. How many said no? Please raise up your hand. Are we leaders? That you said that we are no leaders. Raise up your hand. Those who are not leaders, please raise up your hand. Well, there are many leaders here. Those who are not leaders among sisters, please raise up your hand. Ah, oh, all the leaders, sisters also are leaders. There are so many leaders. That's why we have so many problems. In a way, in a way, the prophet did say. كُلُّكُمْ رَائِنْ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ أَنْ رَائِيَةٍ Every one of us is a leader to yourself. And you will be responsible to your leadership. What you want to eat, what you want to drink, you decide. Don't blame the shaitan. Don't blame him. If you want to drink all the haram drink, what can shaitan do? Shaitan also cannot stop you. He will just give you some idea. Once a while, okay. Don't drink every day. 
If you drink and you get drunk and then you cannot namaz, then you drink after namaz. And put your intention near, near medicine to warm up your body. Not as an, yeah, uh, an alcoholic drink. No, it is medicine for medicine. He can give you that idea. But what I'm going to share with you, brother and sister, is guidance. Allah said, if you have problem after obeying your leader, if you have problem, if you dispute in any matter, disagree in anything in your life, look at what Allah said, فَرْدُّهُ إِلَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ And Allah stopped that. Earlier, Allah said, obey Allah. By doing what Allah wants you to do, He knows what is best for you. Just follow Him and obey the Prophet and leader among you. But when there's any dispute, disagreement among yourself, you have to go back to Allah and the Prophet and stop that. No more to your leaders. Because leader is like you and me. We are human. Allah cannot go wrong. Whatever Allah says is true. The Prophet will never say something against Allah. Whatever he said is true. Other than Allah and the Prophet, we are normal human. We may be right, we may be wrong. Even the four great Imam Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi'i, Ahmad Hanbali, four great Imams said, we are just human like all of you. We may be right, we may be wrong. Whatever we say, do not contradict Allah's word and the sunnah of the Prophet Follow. When it contradicts, abandon our opinion and our saying. Allahu Akbar. But the problem today is not that we have no guidance. It's a ni'mah. Islam is here to guide all of us to solve all the problems that we encounter. And also Islam is here to guide us for our future life. Look at this prayer that we have been asking Allah about ni'mah. I'm talking about the great ni'mah. Siratul Mustaqim. We ask Allah for guidance, for the straight path. Have we been following the straight path, brother? Have we been following the straight path, sister? We are confused sometimes. I will show you what went wrong? In other ayah, Allah said, "Wa anna hada sirati mustaqima." This is my way, the way that you all was asking from Allah, guide us, O oh Allah, to the straight path. Then Allah said, "Wa anna hada sirati mustaqima." Fatbiuhu. This is my way in the Quran. And the way of my messenger, the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, the best of mankind. Then Allah said, follow my way. Allah said, follow my way. Do we respond to this ayah? Do we follow the way of Allah? Do we follow brothers? Sometimes. In general, we do follow. But what went wrong? How can we be so confused and so divided after all of us gathered here together and said that we are following the way of Allah and the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ, but we are so divided. What is happening to us? What went wrong, brothers and sisters? What went wrong? Look at the ayah. Allahu Akbar. The Quran is so beautiful. Reminding all of us. But we are very careless. Allah said, this is my way. Follow my way after following the way of Allah. Wala tattabi'u subula. We have this problem. We do follow the way of Allah. In some matters. 
but then we mix with other ways. Every one of us have their own tradition. Do you have your tradition, sisters? Yes, adat. You have a lot of adat. The Indian have the Indian tradition. The Pakistani have the Pakistan. We Chinese have the Chinese tradition. Chinese love what color, brother? Why? Why they like red? Huh? Lucky, lucky. Hong, hong. <laughs> you like red color? The, the, the Muslim like what color? Green. We green the earth. No problem. Color is a color. Yeah, to believe that this color bring blessing is wrong. It's shirik. It's just a color. The one who gives blessing is Allah, not the color. But it's their culture. So if you want to use a color just because of culture, this color is halal. Is there haram color? Is there any haram color? Then you cannot eat red chili. Because it's haram chili, because it's red. You must go for green chili. <laughs> color is a color, brother. So don't be confused about tradition and religion. Any tradition that do not contradict with religion, carry on. When it contradicts, you must make korbani. You must abandon it for the sake of Allah. Now, this is a great enigma. The Ummah is so confused is because they follow the way of Allah and in the same time, they mix up with other ways. Their culture, their tradition becomes so important that at the end of the day, the Siratul Mustaqim, the way of Allah, is being pushed aside. Tradition is better than religion sometimes. More important, that is what divided us again. So it's time for us to be grateful to Allah. Are we grateful to be a Muslim, sisters? Yes. So be proud to be a Muslim wherever you are. Kunta, the Prophet said. Be faithful to Allah wherever you are. You dress Islamically, not only in this conference, please. Wherever you go, you should be proud that I am a Muslim. This is how I dress. This is how I speak. This is how I eat. This is how I drink. I always look for halal things. Even I have to spend more, I don't mind to spend more as long as halal. Do you do that here, brothers and sisters? Yes. Halal food normally is more expensive than the non-halal food. Is that true in Hong Kong? Yes. But sometimes we are very confused. We just look for halal food, not drink. Drink is okay. There are a lot of Chinese Muslims that I'm aware of. They are born Muslim. They are not reverts. A lot of them from China migrate to Hong Kong too. The only thing that they don't do is no pork. They don't eat kinzir. Other than kinzir, everything goes. But they are Muslim. They are still Muslim. Between eating haram food and drinking halal drink, <laughs> haram drink, which one is better? If you're given a choice, eating pork yeah, and drinking liquor, which one is better? Yeah? Which one is better, sister? Both are haram. Both haram. Which one is more haram? Huh? Haram is haram. I'm just asking a very simple question. Which one is more haram? Ah, alhamdulillah. 
the brother is speaking the truth. Drinking alcohol, drink, drinking liquor is more haram. Why? Because it intoxicates your mind and you behave like a pig. You never see anyone who eat pig or they eat pork, then they get drunk. No, no, no. They can still drive. Alhamdulillah. They can still walk straight. Siratul Mustaqim. <laughs> but when you drink liquor and you intoxicate yourself, you are gone. You are worse than the pig. But today things have changed. Drinking is normal. Oh, no way. I go jihad against pig. But these are greater sin. In the time of the prophet, whoever drink and intoxicate openly, they got hudud, 40 slashes, 40 kin. In the time of Omar, 80. Which one you want to follow? The 40 or 80? 40. Uh, I follow the sunnah. But whoever yeah, eat pig, hudud, is just a sin. You commit a sin. Just to show you the difference between haram drink and haram food. Haram drink is worse than eating haram food. But we are so confused. Big no way. I better die. Peace be lila. Drinking uh, is okay. We are very confused. That's why we are destroying ourselves. That's why Allah said, "Kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiba." Eat what is halal and what is good. By doing that, you are showing Allah that you are very grateful and thankful to Him. Are you happy that Allah gave us a healthy body, sisters? How do you keep your body healthy? By eating the right food. We live to eat or we eat to live? Come on, come on. We live to eat or we eat to live? Huh? Eat to live. Not live to eat. Never mind. You know my people. I'm sharing with you about my people. You live in Hong Kong, you should know the Chinese more than me. But you can ask some Chinese brother. You know the Chinese have a belief. A belief. Before you sleep, before you go to bed, you must have a supper. You must eat. You know why? You may die while sleeping. You know there's a prayer that we always ask Allah, the Muslim. Allahumma khtim lana bil husni al-khatima wa la takhtim alayna bil su'i al-khatima. What is the meaning of that, brother? Share with me this dua. What is the meaning of this dua? Sister, do you understand the meaning of this dua? Allahumma khtim lana bil husni al-khatima wa la takhtim alayna alayna bil su'i al-khatima. What is the meaning of that? We always ask Allah, Oh Allah, give us a good ending. We do not want to have a bad ending. We know one day we are going to end. We are going to go back to Allah. But we want to have a good ending. Do you want to have a good ending, sisters? Yes. How about you, brother? Do you want to have a good ending? All of us want to, want to have a good ending. Even this conference, they want to have a good ending. That the ending of this conference will bring changes into all of us. 
When you were not here, your mindset is different. When you are here, and after you leave this hall, if your mindset is still the same, there is a bad ending. That's not a good sign. When you change, there's a sign of a good ending. The Chinese believe if you die with your belly full, your stomach full, that is good ending. And if you die hungry, oh, bad ending. Your spirit is going to become wild, hunting for food. No, that's why you have hungry ghosts. You remember that? That day, in front of most of the temple, you have a lot of free foods. When I was, yeah, I'm still a Chinese, of course, but when I was not yet a Muslim before, I used to serve the temple. And you don't have to worry about food. Because there are a lot of food in the temple. They send a lot of food and it's free for you. Because they offer to their deities. And we know the deities can't eat. Who is going to eat after that? The caretaker will eat. We are the caretaker. We will eat. After the, the people who offer this word, bye-bye, vida, I know. They go home. We know that this, they are not going to eat. So we will eat on their behalf. But of course, that time is, to me, is because we are not yet a believer, we can eat today when you have become a Muslim, you can't eat anymore. Even the fruit that is halal, if it's been offered to something that is shirik, you cannot eat anymore. It becomes haram. Remember that, brother. Yeah? Orange is halal. But now this orange has been offered to their gods. You can't eat that orange anymore. You know coconut? Indian love coconut. Yeah? Indian love coconut. Ooh. There's one day that they have to break 100,000 of coconuts. You remember that day? What day is that? What day is that? Tai Pusam. Because they are sending the male god to meet up with the female god. They want to go to an Akad Nikah ceremony. Until today, the Nikah is not completed yet. Until today. But anyhow, this is what they believe. Yeah? Why the Nikah is not been perfected? Each time when the Nikah is going to take place, one of the priests will sneeze. One they sneeze, Nikah cancel. So they have to wait for another type of sun. And again, 100,000 of coconut will be sacrificed for it. That coconut is halal earlier, but after it's been used for what they believe, it becomes haram. Please understand this. Yeah? Anything is been offered to other than Allah is considered haram. Lastly, brothers and sisters, I don't know the timing they, they, they allowed me. Yeah? You're still in good time. I would like to remind all the good brothers and sisters to show your gratefulness and thankfulness to Allah Almighty by just fulfilling one thing that we promise to Allah. I'm going to recite this ayah. How many Muslims from Malaysia, Indonesia, or Philippines here? Please raise up your hand. Okay, good. 
And for those who are not from that country, I do not know if you have memorized this ayah or not. But I'm going to guide you. I start in the beginning, then you complete this recitation. Yeah? You complete it by yourself. Inna salati. Then, Allahu Akbar. Do you know why I ask uh, how many who come from Philippines, Indonesia, and from Malay? Because majority of the Malays, they memorize this ayah. Because this ayah, normally they will recite when? When will they recite it? When they perform their namaz in dua iftitah. For the Pakistani, for the Arabs, for, for the Indian Muslim, they normally recite, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, wa tabaraka smuka, wa ta'ala jadduka, wa la ilaha ghayruka. Is that correct? Good. But for the people like Malaysia, Singaporean, Thailand, Indonesia, they will recite what Jatu wa Jalil Lazi Fatras Samawati will Arbi Hani Fa Muslima Wama Ana Mina Mushrikim in Nasolati Wanusuki Wamahyaya Wamamati Lillahi Rabbil Alamin. This is how you show your gratefulness and thankfulness to Allah. By fulfilling this promise that you have made with Allah. What did we say to Allah? Oh Allah, indeed all my namas, all my salawat, whether it's part or optional, all my sacrifices, whatever I do in this life, my eating, my drinking, my working, my sleeping, whatever I do, Ibadah, mu'amalat, munakahat, everything that I'm doing in this life is for you, O oh Allah. And I'm going to die. Are we going to die one day, brother and sister? Yes. We have to go. Whether you are ready or not, you have to go. You don't want to go, also have to go. It's not your choice. It's Allah who decides. When your time comes, you have to go, you go. But we want to go back to Allah in a way that please Allah. Now how do you make sure you please Allah? Look at what Allah said in other ayah. Ya ayuhallazina amanu attaqullah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadin wa attaqullah inna allaha Khabirun bima ta'amalu. O you who believe in Allah, be faithful to Him. When you say faithful, be thankful to Allah and eat and drink and do what is halal. Why? Because you have to prepare yourself for your tomorrow. Our tomorrow is al-akhirah. That is our tomorrow. And before I end again, I just want to remind all the good brothers and sisters how many things that you are aware that is haram. Please share with me, brother, first. How many things that you are aware that is haram? Share with me, brother. Number one, shirk. Shirik is a food or a drink? Yeah? Never mind. Liquor. Liquor is a food or a drink? Good. Okay. Now, when you talk about haram, you remember five types of haram. Haram food. Number one. Number two, haram drinks. You can change the name of this thing. No, this is not wine. This is tonic. No, this is not tonic. This is uh, maybe 
medicine. Uh, you can change, you can give every name. You know, it's up to you. But what in intoxicates you is haram. Kullu sharabin askara fahuwa haram. Every drink that intoxicates you is haram. Whether there's alcohol or not is not an issue. Never once Allah and the Prophet said that alcohol is haram. Allah and the Prophet never used that term alcohol. Khamra is something that intoxicates you. And the Prophet said, Kulu sharabin askara. Askara fahu haram. Now you have food that is haram. Identify the food that is haram. Identify haram drink that intoxicates you. Identify action that is haram. Action that is also shirik. Shirik is not a form of food and drink, but it's a form of action. You are worshipping other than Allah is shirik. You fear other than Allah more is shirik. And look at one of the saying in Surah Al-Kahfi. It's a very important reminder from Allah. Allah said, وَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَأْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِإِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا The last ayah of Surah Al-Kahfi, Allah said, Whoever have the intention, the hope to meet Allah in the day of judgment, where Allah is pleased with you, brothers and sisters, make sure that you do righteous deeds. فَلْيَأْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا you must engage yourself in doing righteous deeds. Do not just, I believe, I believe, but you do not do righteous deeds. Do not commit shirk when you are worshipping Allah. Brothers and sisters, can you commit shirk while you are worshipping Allah? You may commit shirik when you worship other than Allah. But now Allah in the last ayah of Surah Al-Kahfi said, وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِإِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا What do we understand by this ayah? Can we commit shirik when we are doing namaz? Can we commit shirik, sister? When you do pray, Asar, Allahu Akbar. Can you commit shirik? Come on. Can you commit shirik? Yes. How do you commit shirik? Again, brother. Barakallahu fiqum, brother. The shirik is not just the movement. You are facing Qibla. You are worshipping Allah. Alhamdulillah. But because your intention is not for Allah. Shirk biniyat. Your intention is to show somebody. I'm praying because of Fulan bin Fulan. I'm showing my mother-in-law that I'm a praying Muslim. I'm showing my father-in-law that I'm a practicing. When your father-in-law is not dead, you become outlaw. When they are dead, you are in-law always. You follow the law. <laughs> After that, bye-bye. My father no more dead, namaz no more. So you are not praying for the sake of Allah. Your intention is to please that person. This is a form of shirik. Shirik bin niyat. In the day of judgment, when Allah asks you about your prayer, you say, I perform my namaz. Allah knows. You are doing for the sake of somebody. Go to this person and ask him for the reward. Nothing from me. This is number one. Shirk in action. You have also haram in words. One haram food, haram drink, haram action, haram word. What is haram words, brother? Yeah? Again? (laughs) 
In the form of what? Is there a halal gossiping? Is there a halal backbiting? Is there a halal fitna? Is there white lies? Huh? Is there a white lie? You got a black lies or white lies? White people always have white lies. They keep on lying. When the Muslim is talking about peace, they say we are terrorists. They are lying. But what can they do? Because they are white. So whatever the white people say is okay. But what I'm going to share with you, brother and sister, they are haram words. Yeah? Lying and also slandering, gossiping, badbiting, using foul language is haram. Raising your voice in front of your parent is haram. Allah do not allow you to raise up your voice towards your parent. Even they are wrong. You remember what Allah said? And also parents, please spend some time to listen to your children. Your children want you to listen to them too. If you don't want to listen to them, then they have to talk to other people. Then other people will listen to them and it's not good. Because we do not know the intention of other people. Our parents will always want the best for the children. But other people we do not know. They may want to corrupt you. But please listen to them. Mothers, you listen to your children always. When they want to get married, listen to them. Ask them. Not we. We are too old to get married. Call us. But if your daughter wants to get married, don't force them. Talk to them. If they say, okay, alhamdulillah. If you're not ready, don't say, no, okay. Say to your mom, I'm not ready. Don't shout to your mother. Don't shout to your father. You cannot say to your mom, it's not you are going to marry, mommy, I'm going to get married. Don't do this to your mother. Of course, your mother knows that you are, the, you are the one who's going to marry, not her. You don't have to remind her. <laughs> but listen to them. We have problems because children today want to talk to us, but we don't want to listen to them. Please, you know, listen to your children. Now there is haram food, haram dream, har, uh, drink, haram action, haram words. And the last one is haram what? Haram what? My is action. Stealing is action. Gambling is action. It's also action. Haram dress. It's haram for the man to dress like a woman. You can't. But fashion, brother. You know? It's fashion. You know, sometimes even the prophecy is haram for the man to wear pure silk. But Abdurrahman bin Auf and Zubair ibn Awam was allowed by the prophet. Because their body is allergic with other material except silk. Then they can. It's haram for the man to wear gold. Gold is not najis. If najis, woman also cannot use gold. Can you use gold, sister? Can you use gold? Huh? Ask the man, do you have some gold ring and gold chain with you? You must make hijrah already. If not, you have problem. You are a he, you are not she. We don't have a he, she here. Either you are he or she, call us. 
So there is haram dress. The man must dress like a man. And the lady must dress what is right for you. Don't dress like a man. Last time we don't like people to wear anything that do not cover their, their what? The middle part. You know this middle part, sister, is very important. You know why it's important? When we die, when the woman pass away, those who want to perform namaz, salat janazah, where do they stand? Where do they stand? They stand in the middle, where the stomach is. The men, they will stand where their head is. So this is a place that you must cover. But you have some dress. Can an Indian sister, Hindus, and she become a Muslim, she want to dress sari. Can she wear sari? Can she wear sari? Can he, she dress a sari dress? Huh? Oh, yes. Sari is also a dress. Enough. You have enough. But the only thing is the way they, they cover themselves. They cover the top, they cover the bottom, and they expose the middle. It's nothing to do with the sari, it's the way they dress. But now you have girls, daughters, Muslim daughters. They cover here, they cover the bottom. But in the middle, they're still exposed. There is haram. Sometimes you can see people travel three, four miles to get halal food. But in the same time, they are dressing haram dress. Are they confused? Are they confused? They are confused. They do not enter Islam totally. Ya yuhallazina amanu udkhulu fi silmi kafa. Remember that ayah? Yesterday, one of the scholars recite this ayah. Enter Islam wholly, totally, not half heartedly, not quarterly. Meaning, you must think like a Muslim. You make your mind an Islamic mind. Your eye also must enter Islam, Islamic eye. Your hearing become Islamic. Your body become Islamic. Your hand become Islamic. You don't touch anything that is haram. You don't steal. You don't take things that don't belong to you. Your leg also become Islamic. Be a total Muslim. Not only name. My name is a Muslim. My dress is a Muslim. But my conduct is not Islamic. So we want us to be a pure Muslim and a practicing Muslim. So brother and sister, like I said again, remember the five haram. Food, drinks, action, words, and dress. Okay? The prophet did say, there will come a time where my female ummah will dress up, but they are naked. Why? Why we are dressed up? The prophet said we are naked. Why? Either your dress is transparent, can see through, or too tight. Yeah. But some men, alhamdulillah, when they come to the masjid, fully covered. Aura, alhamdulillah. Do you know, brother, that you cannot perform prayer without covering your shoulder? Do you know that? Our aura as a man in namaz is not only from here to the knee, but the shoulder blade. Because the Prophet said in, in Sahih Bukhari, لا يصلين أحدكم بثوب واحد وليس على آتي قيد شيء. 
A man cannot perform namaz with one dress that cover one bottom, but there is no second yeah, part of the dress that cover the shoulder. You cannot expose your shoulder. Even you wear ihram, when you want to make tawaf, you can expose your right shoulder. But when you want to make namaz, you cannot expose. You must cover it. Do you know that? Please remember that. That is also your aura. But sadly, we only cover our aura in the masjid. When you are outside from the masjid, your aura starts to change. When you go to the beach, you become a superman. Not normal man. Superman wear underwear outside. That's why you call him Superman. You seen Superman movie? He always wear the underwear outside. Yeah. So either you want to be a Superman or normal man, you decide. You want to be a normal man or gentleman. So you must dress like a gentleman. So male dress like a male, female dress like a female. So if you see your husband still wearing gold, tell him, ask him, are you a she or he? If you say, I'm he, I'm the man, okay, alhamdulillah, make sujud syukur. Syukur, he admit that he is a man. And then you bring one hadith to show him about gold. And say to your husband, I think that one belong to me. <laughs> It's not yours, it's mine. It's my garment, it's my dress. You don't use that. I will give you other color one. So that is how you help each other. You must help each other in doing something that is good and please Allah that bring you closer to Allah. And do not help each other in doing something that is haram and cause Hatred among yourself. So may Allah bless us, may Allah guide us, brothers and sisters. May Allah save us from kufur of ni'mah, so that we become people who are grateful and thankful to Allah, Rabbul Alamin. It's a great ni'mah to be with all of you for two days. It's a great ni'mah to see a lot of good brothers. I've seen some of the elders who have been here in the 80s. I've seen some of them still around. It is a ni'mah. And we hope that don't forget to pray for each other. We need prayer. Pray for us. We will pray for you. And pray for my family who are not yet Muslim. I still have siblings who are not yet Muslim. But we try. Hidayah is from Allah. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَىٰ وَاللَّهُ يَحْدِي مَا يَشَاءُ The one who gives hidayah is not me, it's not you, it's Allah. But our duty is to Invite them, show them good example, share with them, and may Allah give them hidayah. So, brother and sister, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our deeds, forgive all our sins, the sin of the male and the female, the young and the old among us, and may Allah strengthen our iman, increase our sabr, so that we become not just talking Muslim. I always say, talking Muslim everywhere. Practicing Muslim is very rare. So may Allah make us among the rare one, Gharib, so that we will be blessed by Allah in the day of judgment. And when you see us, when you come to Malaysia next time, pay us a visit. Meet, see us, inshallah. So may Allah bless us, may Allah guide us. Wa bilahi tawfiqi wa laakri da'wana إن الحكم إلا لله عليه توقلت فعليه يتوقل المتوقلون سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته